As promised, I'm back and I'm going to be doing a quick video on what I do to tune the carburetor on my bike, on my GY6 150cc Ruckus. Um, this will work for a lot of the GY6s. It might be a little bit hard on the 49cc. I'm going to figure out how I can do it later with the bung because it's a lot bigger um, diameter than the header pipe that I'm using. The Yoshi pipe is like, I think it's like 16 millimeter header and the bung is a lot bigger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what I use to tune the bike and kind of go about how I'm doing it. Uh, what I like to tune by. I know there's going to be a ton of internet mechanics that are going to watch and give their own two cents and honestly it doesn't matter. When I did Monasi's bike I had that thing dialed in good. I had people still commenting on it like oh you got to do it like this, do it like that. Probably didn't think I was going to reply back to them but I replied back to everything that was uh, any type of criticism I replied back to and usually everything responded back with oh okay oh, all right oh, okay so to each their own everybody has their own methods and ways I'm just showing you mine I'm not saying I'm a professional at any point I just know that when I down my bike in it runs good I gave the same setup to another local guy he's doing 72 he's a little bit lighter than me he's probably about 120 so and it's consistent and that guy puts miles on his bike so I know it works I'll just give you my idea hopefully this helps you if you want to follow the same setup that I have in the future we can go ahead and do that so let's show you what I got. All right, this is my tuning pipe that you saw when I went to Moranasi's. This is my Yoshi stainless steel, uh, I think it's called the Comp Series that we have on the site. It was, it comes stainless steel. This one is old. I mean, I had this one for probably about four years now. So that's why it's all just disheveled. It was, now someone commented and said, oh, why did you plastic dip your exhaust? Let, let's be honest here. Plastic dip is not gonna hold up to that heat. <laughs> This is a uh, ceramic coated, uh, and they usually do it with like a lot of race cars. They'll do it with ceramic coat. It comes out like a flat gloss, or a, I mean a flat black finish, or they do it in like a silver like chrome finish. I just chose with the black because it matches the bike. But you can see it's been beat up, dropped, broke. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your exhaust that you have. You're gonna go on eBay. They have these bunks. And they look like this. They're threaded. I think it's a 1.5 thread pitch. And I like to get them with the, I think it's called like a pipe moon cut. So what it does, it's already got a round cut and it fits right on the pipe like that. I mean, it's perfect. I think it's an inch and a quarter. And then wherever, if you're a fabricator, you can weld it right on. If you're done with fabricator, you can have them put it somewhere on the pipe or if you want the header. I usually don't put it too close to the head. I, it's probably about six to eight inches out. We don't have a lot of room on the pipe, so I put it about halfway. I know. With the wide bands, they usually specify you have to be like 12 to 15 inches, but it's a little, this is a air-cooled scooter. It's got one cylinder, so it's not going to be as serious as a car. It's going to come with a top like this, a little screw in top. This one I probably have in there tight. I'm not going to be able to take it out. But that is where your wide band is going to go, the sensor. So after you get that on eBay, they usually come in a pack, I, or you can probably find it single, but I know I got them in a pack. Then the next thing you're going to need to do is get the AEM wideband, which is usually I think like 170, 180 bucks online. It's usually for a car and it comes with the meter here, the sensor, and then a bunch of the wiring. What we had to do is, it's taped up in here right now, but because I didn't want to use this full time, I used this for the power and ground for the unit. I found out which wires there were coming out of this and wired in one of the tender wires so I could just plug it into my battery tender off the tender to give it power and that's what I'm using right now since it is a temporary fix. Then the other thing I did is usually, usually these are for a car so it has a gauge pod. I have seen different pods out there for the ruckus but because I don't I want to keep it clean and I don't want to use it I found out that the Trailtech TTO mount works with it and you can put it on your handlebar temporarily see what you're doing, then take it off, and I just leave it on that mount, so it worked out pretty well. Then this will screw right into your bung, like that, and just tighten it up. And that's basically everything that you need for, I guess you could say, equipment. After that, it's gonna get into getting your jetting and everything like that, so we'll go over that in a second. So once you have it all installed, 
what you're gonna do is plug it in, make sure that the Y band is working, and it's gonna be reading some numbers across here. It'll start off with like 17, and it's gonna work its way down, especially if the bike's running. Then it's gonna go down. The lows that you'll see is 10. It'll go 10 00. 10 is the richest, 17 is the leanest. A lot of people say lean is mean, which it is, but it's also gonna cause your motor to pop. So I try to keep the longevity of the motor. I run at idle, I probably do a 12.5. So what you're gonna do is change your idle jet. Um, if you have like an Oko slide carb like mine, I have a 32 idle jet. And then, and then the Eric mixture screw, I have all the way tight and then a half of a turnout. That seems to be the right combination for the idle. For the mid-range, I'm usually 11, 5, 12, somewhere in that range. And with that, like I said, the clip is at the middle, or the clip is at the bottom, I'm sorry. The clip is at the bottom, and then I have a 115 main jet. And when I'm wide open, I believe I go down to 11, 6. And I have it at that because sometimes when I'm riding, I'll get a strong wind coming, and you can watch if I had this gauge on, it will lean right out. It'll go up to almost like a 13. So if I was running, say, 13 at wide open, and that happens, it might go to 16. I can cause detonation in the motor, have it pop. I'm not, I don't want to deal with that. So I try to keep it in that range, like idle somewhere in, somewhere in that 12, 12, 11 range throughout the whole beginning to finish. So if you notice that at idle, it's... 14, you might have to go up on your main, your idle jet. You might have to go up to a 35. Um, your mid range, you notice that it's pretty rich while the, you know, maybe it's still 11, 10 when you're in your mid range and it's kind of choking out on you. Then you're going to have to go up on your clip, bring it up a notch, and then ride around, let it get warm. Same thing, bring it up a notch. And you keep working your way up the clip, and that's going to, the clip's going to help with that mid range. For top end, that's going to be your main jet. For a regular 150, I have a 115 in there. When you get to the 171s, usually like a 120. When I had the 205, I had a, I think it was like a 125 or a 128 main jet. And that seemed to be the combo. But everything I did was on here. This has been a big help. Um, other people, they've all tuned off the seat of their pants. And I'm not knocking that at all. I did that for a long time, and it takes a long time. Because you, you have to keep getting a feel for it. Does it feel right? Does it do this? This just makes it a lot easier. It might be a little bit more expensive to get the stuff, but then other people might hit you up. Hey, can you come to my bike? Can you do my bike? Once you get better and better at it and you get used to it, it's not a bad idea. Um, we use it at the shop all the time. We don't even work on bikes here, but for our own personal bikes, we use it all the time. And when the seasons change, we make sure we'll put it on just for like a weekend, see how the bikes are doing. Hopefully this helps you out. It goes over it a little bit. Um, if you have any other questions or anything like that, I can help you out. Send me a message on Instagram. Let me, write me a note on here on YouTube. I just want to give you a quick heads up of what I'm doing here, like what I do to tune the bikes. And hopefully you can see it's not that hard. It's time to ride out. Got to go home. Got a big weekend ahead of me. I'll see you guys later. Be sure to like, share, subscribe.